All right, so the first thing that helps us get a good picture of this graph is realizing that this function can have some issues, okay? What kind of issues can this, this function, seeing as it's a fraction, what kind of issues can it have? What kind of issues can fractions have? Can't divide by zero, and that's pretty much it. When it comes to fractions, we can't divide by zero, okay? So that's one of the things that we want to note over here on our graph is to say, well, there's, there are some conditions that will cause us to divide by zero, and that's not good, and so we want to make like a definitive statement about how uh, that's not a good thing. So what's going to make us divide by zero? One. For one. one. So x is, x can't be one, because if x were one, then what would happen? Okay, so we don't put a, a vertical line here because, well, that's what teacher said, or because it's the rule, or that's step number one, but because we're saying on the graph, if x were one, we'd have a problem. We'd be dividing by zero. Just making a note of that. It's like a detective make, makes notes in his notebook, or her notebook, uh, saying, here's something I know for sure. x cannot be one. Okay? That's what math is about. It's about making notes of everything that I know absolutely for sure. All right, and I really love that math because there's no other subject that can do that. They're all in the brain. Math is the best because you can know things absolutely for sure. Okay, so there's one thing. I'm gonna put a little line there that tells me x can't be one, don't let the graph exist where x is one because well, then that would be impossible, like that can't happen. Uh, so, Got a thing we call a vertical asymptote, right? That's nice. Actually, the vertical asymptote is x equals one. Okay. The vertical asymptote is like a. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about. Well, maybe in the the y direction, there's some kind of a y value that's not necessarily off limits, like this x value, but interesting. Okay, an interesting value of y. The interesting thing about this value of y is that we're going to get very close to a y value, a certain y value. Uh, we're going to get very, very close to it, very close to a certain y value. Okay. Uh, we'll get very close to the certain y value as x, as x gets what? Large, very large. Okay, as far away from zero, okay? Whether it be the positive direction, the negative direction, uh, the bigger the value of, or the, the bigger the magnitude of x gets, uh, the closer we're gonna get to this y value. So the bigger that x gets, what, if we plug a huge number in here for x, then what will this be really close to? Six divided by, say, a billion minus one. What will six divided by a billion minus one be close to? Why do you say that? Because there's no right or wrong answer, just the, the reason why you said it. Makes sense. Okay, it makes sense. I agree it makes sense. And, and why to you, Bo, does it make sense? Because it would be the horizontal asymptote. Because it would be the horizontal asymptote? You would have a horizontal asymptote because of this. Yeah. But why is that? Why? Just saying six over a billion minus one, why, why, the, why is that close to, why is that close to zero? Just explain it in the words. It, it's pretty close. You divide it, it's pretty close. Okay, like if you get out your calculator, you actually do it, you're gonna get, what kind of number you're gonna get? Zero. Close to zero. Like, like what? Like how might that number start off? Zero. Zero point something. Zero point something, zero point maybe zero. Zero, zero, maybe a few zeros, like a lot of zeros, and then maybe a, a non-zero number. No, that's pretty small, right? That's pretty close to zero. Caden, do you have something more? No? Uh, yeah, the six, right? A, a fairly small number divided by a number that's almost a billion. If I plug a billion in there, if I, if I plug in a billion and one, then subtract one, then I'll actually have a billion. So six divided by a billion, that's gonna be pretty small. Imagine six things divided into a billion pieces. Each of those pieces is going to be 0. 0.00000 something. It's very, very small, okay? So the bigger x gets, the closer y gets to 
to zero. So y is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So there's this thing called the horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Let me remind you again, it doesn't mean that necessarily for every function that the, the graph will never touch this value or never cross this value, never touch or cross the horizontal asymptote. That's not necessarily the case. In fact, today we'll see that's not the case. Sometimes your graph is going to cross the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is not a, a, uh, a situation like a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote, absolutely impossible for x to be 1. Okay? But just because the function gets close to 0 as x gets large, it does not necessarily mean that the function will never, ever be equal to 0. Okay. Um, so we put our horizontal asymptote here at 0. As we get more practice at this, we can, we can put those vertic that vertical and horizontal asymptote there in about how long do you think that would take to figure out that that's a vertical and horizontal asymptote? How long? Hours? 10 seconds. OK, 10 seconds maybe it would take to figure that out. All right, so 10 seconds have gone by in real time without all the explanation. We have a vertical and horizontal asymptote. And that's a lot of information. We know that our graph is not going to cross here. We know it's going to get very close to this value. So if we had a couple of points as well, it would be you know, right on our way to having a pretty good picture of the graph, given all the stuff that we already know by these two, the, uh, these two asymptotes. Okay, so let's find a couple of points. What do you think I should plug in like two? two not negative 10. Why not negative 10? Because then you have a, not a real number. If I plug in negative 10? Negative 11. Oh, sorry. I'm not taking the square root of that number, so that's oh. it's okay to have a negative number, right? I know 6 over negative 11. I mean, negative 6, 11, so that's pretty small. But you can have negative 11, right? Yeah. So then what was your question? I missed the question. My question is why would I, why would I run a plug in 2 as opposed to plugging in negative 10? Why would this, not that I can't do it, and why wouldn't I really care? It's probably just some number that's really close to zero. It doesn't tell me a whole lot about what this graph looks like. If I stay around this area, you know, where the crossing of the asymptotes is, that's going to tell me more about the function, more about the graph. Okay, not that I can't plug in negative 10, I could. It's just going to be something that's really close to zero, because as we said, as x gets larger, y is going to approach zero in this case. Okay, so let's plug in 2 for x. And see what y is, 6 over 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get 6. OK, and then we'll plug in like maybe negative 1. Uh, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 6 over negative 2 is negative 3. OK, those are some good points to plot. 2, 6, and negative 1, negative 3. Now, two points may not seem like a lot, but here are the things that we know. Uh, we know that as I, if I were to plot more points here, uh, I really, uh, I would just <coughs> get larger and larger and larger values. The closer x gets to this bad value of 1, the closer the denominator gets to 0, meaning we're dividing 6 by this teeny tiny number, right? Like 6 divided by a half, that would be 12. 6 divided by a third. That'd be 18. 6 divided by a fourth would be 24. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. So the closer x gets to being 1, the bigger the y value is. If I were to plot more points uh, on this side, I know that as x gets larger, y approaches 0. So we have the graph approach this horizontal asymptote. Okay, same thing over here. Uh, I, could even, I could plot like two points here. Actually, these, these graphs are symmetrical, so I know that one to the right of the vertical asymptote gives me six, so one to the left should give me you know, six below the horizontal asymptote. Okay? And that tells me my graph is going to just shoot infinitely far down towards y is negative infinity, but never cross the, or the uh, vertical asymptote. And we're going to approach the horizontal asymptote as x goes towards negative infinity. Okay. Any questions? All right. It took a little while because we're going back over those basics, but then we're going to uh, try and speed through this one a little bit faster, knowing that we know the basics now.
that was 22 is next. about it in the same order, why not? This order is good. Uh, let's talk about what value of x is off limits. It's no good. It's a problem child. 9. Why 9? I love all of this talking about dividing by 0. Is the reason because there's a minus 9 there? No, that's not really the reason. I mean, that does cause us to get 0. Why does that even matter? Because we're dividing by 0 when that happens. That's the issue. That's why we jump over here to 9, put a vertical dotted line to say 9 is a bad value of x, because 9, if x is 9, we would divide by 0, divide by 0 is impossible. So we give ourselves a little note of that. Okay? Don't have to draw a vertical asymptote, but it sure is a helpful note uh, to remind you later as you put all the pieces together, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell that I'm really going to want to be more All right, to uh, make sense of this next part, let's again think about uh, <clears throat> this whole function. If I let x get to be very, very big, what will y be equal to, okay? And really, the fancy way, the mathy way of asking this question is to write that thing right there. This do you know what LIM stands for? Lim? Lim? Nope, it doesn't stand for Lim. It's a good guess, though. You read the letters in order, pronounced them correctly. It's the first three letters of the word limit, okay? Limit. The word limit means, like, you know, I go up the limit. If the limit is this podium, I can't just kind of get close to it, right? Not really going to go through it. Or if I really in mathematics, if my limit is this podium here, I might go past it. But then I'm going to come back over here to it, and I might go past it again, but then I'm going to come back to it and just get closer and closer and closer until I am almost just there. So okay. would the limit be where it crosses on the axis then? The limit would be... If we're going to... The limit would be the number, right? The, the output that this gets close to, okay? Even if it actually has that value at some point, I, mean, I showed you how we can have graphs that even though this has, like, say, an order of coordinate asymptote right here, the graph can bounce up and down and up and down and up and down. If at a number of times, cross the order of asymptote, make it closer and closer and closer to it as x gets to be very, very large. Okay. Okay. So the limit is, when I, if I write it this way, this fancy way that's kind of, you know, advanced, um, all it is, it's a simple thing, what, uh, what value here do I get for this whole expression as x gets to be larger and larger and larger. So the thing I like about these limits is for the most part you can just think about them, okay? Uh, I like to break it into pieces. Let's think about this, and then let's think about what happens when we add this to this, okay? What this piece, if I think about this piece and x gets very, very large, then what will this piece get close to? Zero. Okay, what do you think? Will that that dotted outline piece, will I go to zero as x gets very big? Hunter? What do you think? Agree? Mm -hmm. Anybody disagree with that? Again, 11 divided by, choose the large number of your choosing, 1 million, okay? I had 1 million in the denominator. Plug 1 million and 9 in there, subtract 9, I have 1 million. 11 divided by 1 million, very, very tiny. Not tiny enough for you, put in a big number for x. Bigger than that, bigger than that, bigger than that. That piece is going to be almost nothing close to nothing as you want to get. And what happens when I add almost nothing to 9? Above 9. Almost nothing above 9. Or if x were at negative infinity, almost nothing below 9. Right? In either case, almost 9. A little more than 9, barely more than 9, or barely less than 9. So the value that we're getting close to is 9. And so we make a note of that. The value we're getting close to is 9. You might think, well, I have this function, I have this plus 9, I remember there's this uh, shift left, right, up, down thing about graphs, and I'm going to remember that if there's a plus 9, I shift the horizontal axis to an up 9. 
That's fine, you can do that. So it's a little oversimplified. Okay. If you move forward choosing to say to yourself, what does this get close to, and what does this get close to, and then putting a note of that on the graph, you'll be much better off, rather than memorizing shifting up and left and right and down and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So this piece goes to zero as x gets really big, meaning that if we add almost zero to nine, we get really darn close to nine. As darn close as you want to get. Okay, then let's find a couple of points. Actually, you know what we could do? We could graph a point to the left of the vertical asymptote, to the right of the vertical asymptote, and then we can use the symmetry of these, what I call hyperbolas, to reflect those around. But then we'd have four <coughs> points, we'd double our points. It's pretty cool. So let's try. Oh, I should write h of x. It's the name of this function. Okay, so maybe let's plug in like 10, but also plug in, well, not, not uh, 8, because that's just one to the left. That we get that one for finding this one. So let's just go over here to uh, 7. So we'll do 7, and we'll do 10. So 7, that's 11 over 7 minus 9 plus 9. That's 11 over negative 2. So that's negative... 11 halves plus, let's say, 18 halves, common denominator. And so we have 7 halves. Did you get that right? That doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how, how strange that seems. Uh, OK, well, that's what? That's 5 and a half. Let me give this some thought. Oh, I just plugged in 7. I was some reason I was in the world of 10. OK, so we plugged in 7. Uh, we got 7 halves, which is uh, 3 and a half. So we are at 1, 2, 3 and a half. All right. Well, that's just 2 to the left of the vertical asymptote. Let me go 2 to the right of the vertical asymptote. And how far are we like away from the horizontal asymptote? We're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'll go 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six and a half, right? One, two, five, five and a half. Right. All right. So going two to the right, we're at one, two, three, four, five and a half above the horizontal asymptote. Okay, now we plug in ten. Eleven over ten minus nine plus nine. That's eleven over one, that's eleven plus nine. Is what? 20. 1, 2, 3. That's pretty, pretty far. That's all right. Okay. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so we're at 10, comma, 20. Right? Which means that if I were to move just one to the left of the, the uh, horizontal asymptote, this is 11 away from the horizontal asymptote, so I should go 11 down here, so this is 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we've got four points, not much work. I can see how I would have all these points in between, if I were to plug in anything between uh, 7 and 8, I would get all these points in here, I can see the trend starting here down towards negative infinity. As I come up and I plug in values of x that are more and more and more negative, I get closer and closer and closer to 9. Yeah. So I draw my, that towards the horizontal asymptote. <coughs> Same thinking here. See the trend continuing up and up and up and up, never crossing the vertical asymptote, but getting very, very close, and then towards the horizontal asymptote as we go to the right. All right, and 31. Yes, thank you for asking the question. Um, how did you get seven halves? How did I get seven halves? Well, maybe by mistake, or maybe I can explain it. Let's see. So I plugged in seven for x, seven for x. So uh, seven minus nine is negative two. So we have 11 over negative two, so that's 11, negative 11 halves. Okay, plus 18 halves. Okay. I didn't put it past myself to make a mistake. All right, 31. One. Y equals negative 5x plus 2 
over 4x plus 5. Everything's just a little bit more challenging, but it's just like more interesting. OK, so I'm going to start again by asking the question, are there next values that are going to cause a problem that I should put a vertical asymptote? Um, yes, if. If this, the denominator, is equal to 0, I would be dividing by 0, which is impossible. So let's set that equal to 0, and then figure out what x value would be uh, the bad x value. If 4x plus 5 is equal to 0, then 4x would need to be equal to negative 5, right? Subtract, ne subtract 5 from both sides. Divide by 4, we figure out that if x were negative 5 fourths, we plug that in there, we would get a 0 in the denominator. We can't divide by 0. So negative 5 fourths is the value of x that we want to stay away from. We put ourselves a Negative 5 fourths, we don't want x to be negative 5 fourths. And let's talk about that horizontal asymptote. What is that value that y approaches as x gets really big, right? In fancy terms, the limit as x goes to infinity of our function. What's it going to get close to? Anybody remember? It would get close to negative 5 fourths. If you're not sure, uh, try it yourself. Try and plug in this uh, a really huge number, okay? Like uh, 100 million plus two. How important is this plus two when x is 100 million? Right, it's the important point we're making here. Not very important. I get. Can I ignore it completely? No, but I kind of could, right? Could almost pretend like it's not there. All right, like a young sibling. It's kind of annoying. No, not too annoying. Just like plus two annoying. Uh, so we have this big number and then plus two. Like plus two. So what? Plus two. Not a big deal. Okay. And in, in evaluating limits, it's helpful to think about how, by comparison, this is so small it's almost ignorable, and then ignore it. Okay. Uh, and then we have four times one hundred million. Plus five, how important is this plus five when we're plugging in a million? How important is the plus five if I plug in one? Okay, it's important now because this, they're, they're kind of close to each other. But when, once x runs away with it and gets so big, now this plus five, you could just, for all intents and purposes, ignore it because the output is going to be so close to whatever this is that we could at least be able to tell ourselves it's getting close to whatever that fraction is. Okay, and what is negative 500 million over 400 million? Negative 5 fourths. Exactly. It's not ever going to get exactly to negative 5 fourths, right? Because it's plus 2 and this plus 5, the, ignoring, the annoying little siblings get in the way and they just kind of mess things up just enough to not ever actually get to negative 5 fourths. But it's going to get painfully close to negative 5 fourths. And I'll just point out, just in case you're wondering, it is just a coincidence that the, neg the horizontal and the vertical asymptote are negative 5 fourths. It's just a coincidence. OK, so we have a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote. All we're missing is a couple of points. Uh, I'm going to suggest we go out to like, uh, I don't know, maybe let's try 4 or something. Let's go out. Yeah, negative 20 plus 2 over 16 plus 5. So we have negative 18 over, what did you say, 20, 21. Okay, both of those are by 3, so a negative 6 over 7. Negative 6 sevenths. Okay, so that's uh, really close to negative 1. I may have strayed a little too far from the vertical asymptote, but the uh, it does give me information. I know that I'm going to keep going and approach the horizontal asymptote to the right. I know that I'm going to obviously come up and approach that vertical asymptote, shoot off towards positive infinity in the y direction. Okay. 
Now let's plot a point, maybe not get so far away. Let's maybe go to negative uh, three, four, negative four. So we get positive 20 plus two over negative 16 plus five. It's 22 over negative nine. No, 11. Negative 11. Hey, that's negative 2. Negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2, right there. There we go. So some mass and totes, a couple of good points. Good to go. And not, I mean, it's not going to be terribly important right now, like for the, the uh, homework quiz, but I just want you to note how just the ratio of those leading coefficients wind up being our horizontal asymptotes. And that will happen again today with the new stuff. Okay? So, any more questions? I don't know how I got seven and a half. Maybe six, seven. So. All right. Ready to go? Clear desks. <laughs> All right, so again, these uh, problems are about making notes about the things that we know for sure, kind of filling in the blanks uh, little by little until we have a pretty good picture on kind of minimal effort, I guess. So uh, let's call this first things first. What's that value of x, if any, that causes you to divide by zero? So three would be that guy. So we're going to throw a vertical asymptote at three saying x being three is not good. It's in fact impossible for x to be three. Okay. Um, what value is this function going to get close to? What y value is it going to get closer and closer and closer to as we let x get really, really big? Zero. Zero. We're going to have negative three divided by this huge number, which would be incredibly small. And now we throw ourselves a couple of points up there. About uh, four and three, or four and uh, two, not bad choices there, I think. Four minus three is one, negative three over one is negative three. Put two in there, negative two minus three is negative one, negative three over negative one is, is three. Yeah, negative three over negative one is three. I got sidetracked. <coughs> so uh, four gives us a negative three, and two gives us a positive three. And when I graph this right here, approaching the vertical asymptote, not ever crossing it, approaching the horizontal asymptote, approaching the vertical asymptote, approaching, approaching the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Well, this looks kind of like these graphs that we did, like all three of these. Okay. Except for we see how there's like a graph in the top right and the bottom left. This one, we see it at the bottom right and the top left, right? Okay, not too surprising, right? Because of what do we see? We've got a negative three, right? The number in the numerator is this negative number as opposed to uh, what we've seen is a, a positive number up top for those other three from the homework. But, zoom. We got all that stuff in there. We put all that information down. Uh, it didn't take a lot of work because we were smart about it. We worked smart, not hard. We found the information that was crucial, put it down, and then we graphed uh, everything based on of that. Okay. So the problem with a fraction is if we divide by zero, can't divide by zero. So we'll figure out what is it that would make that denominator equal to zero. All we have to do is solve for x. Add two to both sides. Divide by two, x can't be one. That's our vertical asymptote. As I plug in a million and a billion and a trillion in for x, what number will I get close to? Get close to three, yeah, get close to three. If I plug in a billion, it'll be really close to being not quite because of this minus one, but really close to being six billion over two billion. Six billion over two billion would simplify to three. It's 
So we're going to get really close to 3. Um, we have a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote. There's only one vertical asymptote. There's only ever going to be one horizontal asymptote for the functions we're dealing with. So we'll plot some points. See where that leads us. Plug in like three, plug in three, and let's say negative one. Okay, so we get 18 minus one over plug in three years, so we get six minus two, so 17 over four. 17 over 4, that's almost 16 over 4, right? which would be 4, that's one fourth more than that, it's 4 and a fourth. 3 is 4 and a fourth. Negative 1, plug in negative 1. Uh, negative 6 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 2, that's negative 7 over negative 4. That's seven fourths. So seven fourths. That's uh, just one and three fourths. Negative one, one and three fourths. So we go this way as we plug in a bigger and bigger value of x. As we discussed, the y value gets closer and closer to three. Here we get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote. Closer to the vertical asymptote. Closer to the horizontal. Any questions before we move on to new things? Not terribly new things, just building off of these old things. Okay. Well, here's how today is going to differ a little bit from what we've done so far. We're going to have multiple vertical asymptotes sometimes, or no vertical asymptotes sometimes. Okay. And then we're going to have all these different possibilities for uh, basically what's going on way out here, the end behavior. Okay, what's going on way out here? So far we've had like a linear factor, right? Linear meaning like if I if I said y equals 6x minus 1, that would be a graph of a line, right? Over a linear factor. At most we've had a linear factor over a linear factor, or a degree one polynomial over a degree one polynomial. And now we'll just bring up those degrees. Degree two, degree three, right? You have different degree polynomials in the numerator and denominator and see what that does for us. Okay. So we're gonna look at uh, a few different functions. We're just going to go like through them piece by piece and do the same piece of each of these, of all three of these, at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the vertical asymptotes of all three. And we'll come back through and we'll talk about uh, the horizontal asymptotes of all three. We'll talk about the x-intercepts of all three. Okay? We'll also talk about when we get to the horizontal asymptote piece, we're going to talk about how sometimes we cross the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is not like the vertical asymptote. It does not say you can't cross this like the vertical asymptote does. Okay. Here's where having talked it over and over and over and over about what the vertical asymptotes mean is going to be a helpful thing. Okay. Where should I put vertical asymptotes for this graph? Well, okay, let's let's jump back here real quick to this previous one. Why is there a vertical asymptote here at one? Alright, there is the, the crux of the whole thing of the underlying principle of uh, of the vertical asymptote. Okay. If we divide by zero, it's no good, it's impossible. So if x is negative 1, this would be negative 1 plus 1. That would be 0 times, who cares what that is, because 0 times anything is 0, meaning the denominator would be 0. We're dividing by 0 if x is negative 1. Agreed? If x is negative 1, we're going to be dividing by what? Dividing by 0. Can we divide by 0? No, we can't. So we, at negative 1, put a little note for ourselves for the near future to remind ourselves that uh, x cannot be negative 1. That's impossible. What, x, what else can x not be? Positive. 
right? So uh, you know, x can't be negative 1. x can't be 2. Multiple vertical asymptotes. How many vertical asymptotes could you possibly have? An infinite number, depending on uh, what kind of a polynomial I have here. Okay. As many vertical asymptotes as you want. As many different values of x cause the denominator to be 0. All right, vertical asymptotes again for this guy here. How would you go about figuring that out? How would you figure out what values of x cause us to divide by 0? Set it equal to 0. Right? If the denominator equals 0, that's bad. How are we going to figure out what values of x cause us to get 0? How do we do that? Well, for x, yes. Factoring. The word, yeah, the official word is factoring. How would we factor this quadratic? All you have to do to verify that is multiply it out. <coughs> x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 4 times x is positive 4x. 4x and negative 3x add to positive 1x. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So that, it, we've just factored it. If this equals 0, that's bad. Well, then that just means, well, if this is 0, we'll have 0. If this is 0, we'll have 0 as our answer. So x shouldn't be negative 4, and x shouldn't be 3. These are the things that cause us to divide by 0 in our function. So, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's a vertical asymptote, and 3, there's a vertical asymptote. There are values of x that will cause us to divide by 0, and therefore we exclude them. We say, do not let x be either of these values. All right. How about this one? What values of x will cause us to get 0 in the denominator here? about it, you know, just kind of straightforward. If I want the denominator to be 0, well, here's a 3, right? And I'm adding something to it. What would I have to add to 3 to get 0? 3 plus the square root of 3 is 0? Oh, no. I would have to add, right, I'm just asking what's the number that I would have to add to 3 to get, to get 0? 3 plus negative 3, that's what this would have to be. Can this be negative 3? Can this square number get negative 3? No. We can see that by solving this equation as well. Set the denominator equal to 0. x squared equals negative 3. Take the square root of both sides. We get plus or minus the square root of negative 3. What kind of number is that? An imaginary number. We're not going to graph imaginary numbers. This is for real numbers. Okay. So forget about that. There are how many vertical asymptotes? There are zero vertical asymptotes. So no values of x that are off limits. No real values of x that are off limits. This might be easier to look at as 1 over x squared minus x minus 2. Then again, we are. Let's talk about that possible horizontal asymptote. As x gets to be a very, very, very big number, what will the function itself approach? Close to 1, maybe close to negative 2, close to 0, close to 5. What will we go close to? as I plug in a billion and a trillion and a zillion in for x. Zero. One divided by a huge, huge number is going to get close to zero. Maybe it'll be positive, maybe it'll be negative, but it'll be really close to zero. Okay? And I'm going to do something here to uh, really emphasize something I've been saying over and over and over and over to the point that hopefully you're sick of hearing it because you remember that you heard it before. Uh, I'm only going to draw the horizontal asymptote out to the sides, okay? Because the horizontal asymptote is not about the value of y can not ever be, but about the value of y that the function gets close to as x gets to be very large, okay? As x gets to be very large, 
the y values are going to come either down towards or up towards zero. Okay, I'm not quite sure what they're going to where they're going to be coming from yet. Now, in the middle here, we may cross the horizontal asymptote. It may happen. It may not. Okay. So let's see what happens here. Um, well, to be continued, because now we're going to go over here to this guy, and it's horizontal asymptote. This one's a little different. We have this. Here we just had a one, right? One divided by a big number, small. Right? One divided by a big number is a small number. But in this one we have x, right? So this gets big too. This gets really big. And so does this. This gets really big, and this gets really big. Okay. So what will the overall output of this function get close to as x gets incredibly, incredibly large? Not just ten, and not just hundred, but a thousand, a million, a billion, a trillion. You can get close to one. So you got this x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. Maybe, maybe one, maybe a half. This is x to the first, x squared, maybe half. Any other guesses out there? That seems to make sense. Half maybe maybe half doesn't make sense. Maybe zero. Maybe zero. Okay, well, walk us through that a little bit more. What do you, why? I'm just thinking because, like, x squared is still gonna, eventually it's gonna get way bigger than x. That much bigger, you think? Yeah, x squared is gonna be that much bigger than x? Yeah. It would literally be x times bigger. And whatever x is, that's how many times bigger this number will be. Think about this. Uh, let's get a fresh uh, piece of paper here. If I use that, uh, X minus four. Let's copy it over to the next page. Okay. So to recap, what was just stated: x squared is x times bigger than x. It is x times x. So imagine we plugged in a trillion, okay? A trillion, that's gonna take a minute. Hold on, stay with me. We're at a billion, now a trillion. Minus one. How important is that? Not important. So we can kind of ignore it. Okay. Uh, let's work our way back from here. Minus 12, how important is that gonna be as we plug in a trillion for x? Not very important. Okay, a trillion though, that's really big. So let's look at a trillion. Okay, so there's a trillion for x. Okay, but this is not just a trillion. It's a trillion times another trillion. And if x squared is x times bigger than x, then a trillion squared is how much bigger than a trillion? A trillion times bigger. Even though a trillion is really big, a number that's a trillion times bigger than another number it's a lot bigger than that other number, right? It's a lot bigger, not just kind of bigger, not pretty big compared to like, oh, 10 is quite a bit bigger than one. Like, consistently, this number will be x times bigger. Whatever you choose for either one of these x's, whatever you choose for x, this will be that many times bigger. And so even though the trillion is big, a trillion times bigger is way bigger, okay? What's that? One with 24 zeros compared to a one with 12 zeros. Okay. You have twice as many zeros. That's that's huge. Uh, the number of particles in the universe is around a one with 84 zeros. Okay. The number of particles in the universe is one with 84 zeros. So, I mean, 24 zeros is pretty big. I mean, not that many more zeros. You get to 84 zeros or 86 zeros in basketball. That is uh, how many particles are in the universe. So, like, you add a few more zeros, that's a big deal. It's a very big deal. So, what's the point I'm making? If you take a number and divide it by a number that's a trillion times bigger than that number, it'd be the same as taking one divided by a trillion. A trillion is a trillion times bigger than one. Right? One, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, one, twelve. What kind of number is one divided by a trillion going to be? Really close to zero. Why even quibble over it being any 
bigger than zero. It's so much barely bigger than zero that it's ridiculous, right? So because this is an x squared and this is just a measly x, no, it doesn't seem like that big a difference. x squared at some point will be so much bigger than x that to divide one number by the other is to get really close to what? It's going to get really, really close to zero. This is going to be crazy close to zero. So this is some kind of a thing that we can look out for that will tell us whenever a function is going to be approaching zero as x gets to be very large. What's that? No addition or subtraction. No addition or subtraction? Like, oh, none of this? Okay, yeah, let's, let's say we don't have an, a, like a plus 9 or minus 10 or whatever. Let's just look at the, the fraction itself. So what, what can I look for in this fraction that will tell me you're going to be getting close to 0 as x gets very big? Well, this is squared and this is to the first. How about this, this function here? Put like 200 x squared plus 3x minus 5 over. What would I want to see in the denominator that would tell me this thing's going to go to zero? A bigger power. So you're going to have a bigger power in the denominator, whatever the biggest power in the denominator is. That's going to run away with it. Even though it says a 200, it's not going to even matter if this is an x cubed. Just x cubed is enough. x cubed is so much bigger than x squared. x squared is going to be the biggest thing in the numerator. We talked about all this too, right, with the polynomial end behavior. We talked about how x squared is so much bigger than anything that's, that has a lower power. And the same comparison helps us here in the rational functions. x cubed is so much bigger than 200x squared that it will eventually go to zero. Okay? And I say eventually because x is going to have to be pretty big. What if x is 200? What if x is 200? That's a good question. Because what will happen then is we'll have here, let's just concentrate right there. You'll have 200 times 200 squared. That's 200. That's 200 times 200. So that's 3 200 multiplied together. And then you have your other stuff. And in the denominator, we're going to have 200 to the third. What's that? It's the same. It's 3 200. That's kind of like almost the breaking point. Okay. When x is 200, we're going to be kind of or one-ish, right? It's almost even. Once you get past 200, though, once you get beyond the coefficient of this guy here, this starts to be bigger, okay? So it might take a really big x, but some value of x, once you get beyond that, the tides start to shift, okay? And the denominator will be much, much bigger than the numerator and will be going close to zero, okay? So if we have some function, f of x, we have a bigger degree down here, Where are we going? To zero. To zero. All right, so x squared is so much bigger than x that the, uh, the value of this function is going to get close to zero. How about for this one? Going to get close to? Also zero because here we have an x versus an x squared. x squared is going to get so much bigger, it's going to pull the whole thing down towards zero. All right, so you see we have multiple vertical asymptotes, no vertical asymptotes. Uh, all of these have a horizontal asymptote of zero because in all cases, the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator. Okay? Might be worth noting, degree of the denominator larger means we're going to have a horizontal asymptote of zero. Let's, let's jump back to this second one. Okay? Um, we have set the denominator equal to zero to find out what causes us to divide by zero. It's, it's, you know, it's bad value. What if the numerator was equal to zero? Could the numerator be zero? What would zero, let's say zero <coughs> over five, is there anything wrong with that? No. no, zero, nothing. Okay, I got just a chunk of air here, neglecting the fact that there are air molecules and those are things. And let's say I have no apples. I cut this empty space into five pieces. How many apples will be in this? Zero, right? Zero is not divided by anything, it's just zero. As long as I'm not dividing by zero, I can't divide zero by zero. Okay. Does that happen? 
Do I get zero in the numerator at some point? Where? At one. If I set the numerator equal to zero, solve for x, x is one. Okay. So that would be the one place that the numerator is equal to zero, and as long as the denominator is not also equal to zero, well, then the y value is just zero. Okay. Try it once, you know, the long way. One minus one over one squared plus one minus 12. That's zero over one plus one. That's two minus 12, negative 10. Zero over negative 10, you get zero. Okay, so x is one means we get a y is zero, which means we have a, what's that what kind of point is that called? It's on the, it's an x-intersect, it's on the x-axis. When we plug in one, it gives us a y of zero. That's a, the definition of an x-intercept. So we have an x-intercept, we have vertical asymptotes, we have horizontal asymptotes, right? We have all this knowledge kind of packed into our brains now about the degree of the numerator, denominator, the y-intercept uh, happens when the numerator equals zero, and so on and so on, like that. To put all that information down in the graph, gonna take not very long, 30 seconds? To solve that simple quadratic equation, and then to slap some vertical asymptotes there, to note that the denominator has a greater degree, and to put a horizontal asymptote at zero, and then set the numerator equal to zero, and find an x-intercept, you know, that's taken 30 seconds, maybe. Let's go over here, is this gonna have any x-intercepts? Will y ever be zero? Maybe in the center, but keep in mind, what has to happen to have an x-intercept is that y has to be equal to what? Zero. zero. So will y ever be zero in this case? Or this case. No, the only time that a fraction is going to be equal to zero is if what? The numerator is zero. Will one ever be zero? Not ever in a million years will one be zero. So we don't have any x-intercepts there. We do have an x-intercept there. Do you have an x-intercept here? Yes. Where? Negative one causes the numerator to be zero. If the numerator is zero, zero divided by anything is zero. So there we go. Numerator is zero when x is one, negative one. So we have an x-intercept of negative one. So we've gone through all of these, and we have put down the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, x-intercepts, if any of those things exist. And so what would you do next? Graph. Some points. Let's plot some points, and we're going to have a really good picture of what this graph looks like. Uh, I, you know, and the vertical asymptotes help us make good decisions about the points, so we have to plot the minimal number of points to get useful information. Okay, so I'll plot something over here, something in between, something to the right. So like negative 2 will be good, because it's over here. 0 is nice. I would like to plug in 0 for x if possible. Jump over here to 3. Alright, I, I like those. Negative 2, I'm going to right here. Negative 2, so negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 4, negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. 1 over 4 is 1 over 4. 0 and 0, oh, I'm going to do that over here. 0 and 0 give, give me a negative 2 there. So 1 over negative 2, negative 1 half. 3, let's see, that's uh, 4. 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, 1 fourth again. So negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 2 comma 1 fourth, 0 comma negative 1 half, or no, 0 negative 1 half, not 1 negative 1 half. Um, and 3 and positive 1 fourth. Two vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, uh, three points, and I have enough to, to graph a decent graph. And our graphs are always going to be decent at best. They're not ever going to be perfect. When would they be perfect? The computer does it. I mean, like in, if you think about it, in reality, you could never actually have a perfect graph. You could have a computer that gives you perfect outputs, the input, or outputs to whatever degree of accuracy you want. The graphs are just never going to be perfect. The most perfect you could do would be to have like a razor sharp pencil and a steady hand and a keen eye and a really straight ruler and a really flat paper and all the optimal conditions. But the graphs that we draw day to day, they're going to be 
just pretty good, right? And this is going to be pretty good because I know, like for instance here, as x gets to be more and more and more negative, negative 100, negative a million, and so on and so on, I'm getting closer and closer to zero. As I plug in x values that are closer to negative one, I'm just going to shoot off towards positive infinity. Let me ask you this. So. I, I drew it going towards positive infinity. How do I know it doesn't like go down towards negative infinity? Yeah, we've established that, uh, see here's the horizontal asymptote, and there's a point right on it, right? Again, the horizontal asymptote is not a barrier that keeps you from crossing it. It's not what a horizontal asymptote is about. We definitely have enough information though to say, there's no way that this goes down towards negative infinity aside from the fact that it just is counterintuitive. It doesn't look like it should. There is enough evidence based on what we've done so far, based on what we've found, that that won't happen. Anybody spot anything that tells me that's just not gonna happen? Yeah? Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna point something out right here. What do you see right there? An x-intercept. Does this graph have any x-intercepts? No, because the numerator never will be zero. So I know that's not going to happen. I know that as I approach the vertical asymptote, I'm going to have to like go up or down. And I know in this case, I couldn't possibly go down, because that would mean I would have an x-intercept, which I know I don't have. So I know that it's just going to go up towards positive infinity. Same thing here. I know that this graph is not going to go up towards positive infinity here, because I would cross the x-axis somewhere in here. And that's not going to happen. There's no x-intercepts. This is what I like about analysis problems. I know things for sure. I know, not because there's a horizontal asymptote there, but because there are no x-intercepts. I know I'm not going to go up, it's all down from here. And over here we have the same kinds of things. There we go. Right here we need some points. Let's plot some points. X and Y. So like negative five, uh, we know there's an x-intercept right there. So what we're gonna wanna do though, because do I cross through there like this? Do I cross through like this? Does it come up and touch the x-axis? Does it come down and touch the x-axis? A lot of different possibilities. So we're gonna look to the left and the right of the x-intercept as well between those vertical asymptotes. <coughs> so we're gonna look at zero and we'll look at two and then we'll look just beyond that. You know, see, are we, are we up here? Are we down here? Uh, we'll plug in four. It's okay. so negative five. That's going to be 25 minus five. That's 20 minus 12 is eight. Oh, and then negative six over eight. Negative three fourths. Zero, that's easy. It'll be 1 12th. It's going to be 2 minus 1 is 1 over uh, 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 12, negative 6. So negative 1 sixth. 4 minus 1 is 3. 16 plus 4, 20 minus 12. So negative five, negative three fourths. Negative five, negative three fourths, right about there. Zero, one twelfth. Really the most important thing about this is that it is positive. It's above the x-axis, above this x-intercept. One twelfth. Uh, two, a negative one sixth. So negative one sixth is uh, right there. Uh, then four and three eighths, four and three eighths. So this is really less than a half. So we are going to have this graph be like this. It's going to approach the horizontal asymptote. This guy's going to cross through the x-intercept like that. Then it'll shoot down towards negative infinity as we approach the vertical asymptote. Approach the vertical asymptote. And here, you know, we're going to have something like this.
Last thing here is number of vertical asymptotes is just the next intercept. So let's get an idea. Does the, you know, is the function going to come down like this? Is it going to go like this? Is it going to cross through the x intercept? What's it going to do exactly? All we need is two points, one to the left and one to the right of the x intercept. So zero uh, and negative two, that'll do the job. Zero, that's going to be one over three. So one third, zero, and one third. Negative two, that's going to be negative one over four plus three is seven, so negative one seven. Negative two, negative one seven. So I know it's going to go from below here to up there. And I think it's going to go up a little more, but I know that as I plug in bigger and bigger values for x, I'm going to approach zero. I know that I have to come back down towards the horizontal asymptote. Same thing here. I think it's going to go down like that. Maybe it doesn't quite go up that much. Maybe it goes up higher than that. It can never be for sure unless I plot all the points, which I'm not going to do. But I do know a lot from this horizontal asymptote and these three points. <coughs> Any questions about this at all? All right. We looked at several different situations. You get multiple vertical asymptotes. That was kind of a, a new thing today, where we have multiple vertical asymptotes. Uh, we found horizontal asymptotes. All of these are at zero, so in a second we're going to look at non-zero horizontal asymptotes. Uh, discovered uh, that sometimes you do cross that horizontal asymptote. Here it happened right here. Happened right here as well. You can cross a horizontal asymptote. Uh, found some x-intercepts, plotted some points. You got pretty good graphs here. Uh, that stuff. Let's talk about this function. Let's see if we can knock this stuff out. Vertical asymptotes. Where are they? Find. We should have found at four and two that we have vertical asymptotes because if x is if x were two, then what would happen? Zero. Zero in the denominator can't divide by zero. Now, what do you feel like finding next? So we could find horizontal asymptote, x-intercept. Which what should we go for next? Doesn't really matter. What we do. X-intercepts. Okay, X-intercepts. Well, that'll happen when what happens? Y is zero. When what? Numerator. When Y is zero, and by uh, extension from that, when the numerator is zero, what we're going to have is zero over something, and zero divided by anything <coughs> zero. As long as the thing we're dividing by isn't zero. Okay, so we'll solve that one. Go for it. We get negative 6. We split negative 5 into negative 6 plus 1 because negative 6 and 1 multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. Factor by grouping, find our solutions of 3. And negative 1 half. Those are our x intercepts. Let's talk about a horizontal asymptote. As x gets to be very large, what do you think this fraction will get close to? Two. 
seem like two candidates, one or two. Why do we say one? They both have squares, okay. So think what's gonna happen if we plug a trillion in there. Uh, we've kind of already established that minus three is not gonna make a difference. When we plug in a trillion, this is going to be uh, not as big as a trillion squared, right? It's gonna be far smaller. So uh, we kind of ignore all this stuff. We're kind of left with, kind of left with, two x squared over x squared, okay? So I'll have x squared and x squared, but in the numerator we'll have two times that. Or if you just look at it as 2x squared over x squared, can't I cancel the x squareds? No? Oh. Well, okay. We can cancel the x squareds kind of uh, wishful thinking only because we're kind of ignoring all the other stuff. You're right, but if we were to not be ignoring that stuff, yeah, we can't cancel that out. But if we talk about how insignificant these things are, because x is so big, uh, we can think of it as like, it's like this. And if I'm just looking at 2x squared over x squared, can I cancel x squared with x squared? I can cancel x squared with x squared. Because whenever I like, put 2 in, well, put 3 in for x squared, well, I'm going to have, or 3 in for x. I'm going to have a 9 here, 2 times 9, and down here I'm going to have 9. Right? 9 cancels 9. 9 and 9, 9 divided by 9 is 1. So this number is, in comparison to this number, what? Twice it is. So this number okay, is twice as big as this number. And now if we go back to reality, we say you can't really ignore this stuff. It's true, you can't really ignore it. But it will be really close, really, really close to whatever 2x squared over x squared is. And 2x squared over x squared would be 2. So we get really, really, really close to 2. And so we note that after Okay, so we say it's going to get really close to 2. Really super duper close to 2. Okay. So back here we said the horizontal asymptote of all three of these is 0. Why is that? Why are the horizontal asymptotes all 0 here? Because the degree of the denominator is bigger than that of the numerator. So the denominator will be so much bigger that it will be pretty much going to zero. Here, what would we say about this? Uh, what am I looking at? Not this one. What do I say about this function? The degrees are the same. So as far as like the magnitude of this thing, they're kind of evenly matched, except for the numerator in this case is going to be twice, or nearly twice as big. Not exactly, because we have this, this little bitty stuff over here. So what about the higher the number? Well, if this were 2x squared over 3x squared, what do you think that would get close to? Well, it's true that the denominator would be bigger than the numerator, but the x squared and the x squared, they're, they're like evenly matched. So essentially, we have a ratio of 2 to 3. That would approach 2 thirds. Right? We'd have a number that's twice as big as x squared and a number that's three times as big as x squared. The x squareds kind of cancel each other out and are left with something really close to 2 thirds. In this case, though, we're approaching 2. Okay. So we just need some points. Lots of points. Let me show you a handy little thing. <coughs> <coughs> if I have a graphing calculator, which you maybe own or maybe you're borrowing one from me, if you go into y equals, notice all these functions are y equals. Well, I put this function in there, 2x or 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 over, in parentheses, x squared minus 6x plus 8. I can go to the table and have it give me all the x values I want. So if I plug in an x value of negative 2, which is a kind of a good idea. Uh, one, which is right there, that's a good idea. It's between the x-intercept and the vertical asymptote. What's that? Oh, yeah, they're kind of being weird. Uh, if I plug in two and a half, and three and a half, and five, 
right? It tells me the output immediately. So point, negative 2.625, negative 2, and 0.625. Bring that back. 1 and negative 2. Two and a half, comma four. Three and a half, comma negative five point three repeating. Right there. And last, uh, oh, this is six, six, comma four point eight seven five. Six, comma four point eight seven five. Those points, I know a lot of things. I know that I'm going to cross through this x-intercept and go through here. I know that I'm going to keep going down, 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 because to come up would mean I need another x-intercept. I know that I don't have any more. I know I'm going to come up here and approach 2 as x goes more and more to the negative. I know I'm going to go from here through the x-intercept like that. All right. And it's going to go down, down, down towards negative infinity. It's never coming back up. And this guy's going to approach 2. Back this way, we're going to go up, up towards positive infinity. So this is almost the same as all of these guys here, right here. What's the main difference between these ones and this one? Yeah, so we've got that even match x squared to x squared. And so rather than approaching 0, we approach, approach some non-zero number. 2 or whatever the ratio of those leading coefficients would be. 2 over 3, 2 over 5, negative 3, positive 7, whatever that ratio is, that's what it's going to get close to. The numerator and denominator almost equally matched, being that they have the same degree. Okay. 